Hello and welcome to lecture 7 of our series on fluids and electrolytes. The book is Manual of Fluid, Electrolyte and Acid-Based Disorders, a Pathophysiologic Approach to Common Clinical Problems. I am Dr. Mohamed Tinawi, a nephrologist in Northwest uh, Indiana. Uh, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. Uh, when you subscribe, you get notification with the new videos that I keep adding. This is the book. You can find it on Amazon. It's available in paperback and also in e-copy. We are still on chapter one, disorders of water balance, hyponatremia and hypernatremia. This is part seven. And uh, we started last lecture talking about general principles in the management of hyponatremia. And this is episode two of the management of hyponatremia. If you have not watched Part six, please do so and then move on to this part. Now, when we are correcting hyponatremia, again, we have to remember that both potassium and sodium contribute to the tonicity of the serum. Therefore, giving potassium to someone who's hyponatremic is exactly like giving sodium. Why is that? In lecture one, we mentioned the Edelman's equation that serum sodium equals exchangeable sodium plus exchangeable potassium divided by total body water. So both potassium and sodium are active when it comes to tonicity. Why is that, you might ask? Again, I'm going to repeat the explanation. In hypokalemia, sodium shifts from the extracellular compartment into the cells to maintain cellular volume and osmolality. That the loss happened when you lose potassium. Now, when we replace potassium, what's going to happen to the sodium is going to go back from the intracellular compartment into the extracellular compartment. Therefore, giving potassium is like giving sodium because the sodium that was borrowed, if you will, the sodium that went intracellularly is going to come back into the extracellular compartment, so it counts. Therefore, sodium will rise. For, for example, and there'll be other examples coming, if we give one mil equivalent per kilogram of IV potassium chloride, correct hypokalemia, serum sodium will rise by two, assuming that we have a total body water of 50%. So someone with severe hypokalemia uh, who weighs, uh, for example, 60 kilograms, you can easily give uh, three K riders a total of 60 mil equivalents of potassium IV over six hours. That will raise your serum sodium by two mil equivalents per liter. Now, when we have hyponatremia and we decide to give fluids, okay, sometimes you don't need to give fluids. If you have someone with congestive heart failure, you may want to give a loop diuretic, but let's say that the patient is dehydrated or he has SIADH or the patient is symptomatic and you decide to give IV fluids. So what kind of IV fluids are you going to give? You are either going to give normal saline or 3% hypertonic saline. Obviously, you're not going to give D5W or half normal saline to someone with hyponatremia. At least I hope not. Now, these are the steps we are going to follow. We are going to calculate total body water, and they are equations that give you more accurate estimate, but a rough estimate suffice. So for women, we divide, total, uh, to, uh, we divide ideal body water by 2, so 50%. And for men, we, we take ideal, ideal body, uh, body weight, and we multiply it by 0 0.6, or 60%. Then we determine the desired serum sodium. How much do we want to raise sodium? By five, by four, by six. Like we said before, there's no reason to, uh, to raise sodium by more than four to six per 24 hours. Up to eight is okay. The limit is 10. 10 is the ceiling. Then we determine, we need to know the sodium content of the IV solution. And please remember these two numbers. Normal saline isotonic saline, 0 0.9 saline has 154 mil equivalent of sodium per liter. You have to memorize that. 3% saline has 513 mil equivalent of sodium per liter. Okay, so let's remember these numbers. Now, we use this simple formula to determine the volume. 
So the volume of IV solution we're going to infuse is called infusate. Okay, this is the volume to be infused. We take total body water, we calculated that, and we multiply that by desired sodium minus current sodium in the num numerator divided by the sodium in the solution we're giving, or the infusate, times 1,000, so we get the volume in milliliter, not per liter. Let's take a simple example. We have a 60 kilogram woman, therefore, uh, if she, if her body, body, lean body weight is 60 kilogram, her total body water is approximately 30 liters. So 60 times 0 0.5, we get 30 liters. Serum sodium is 120, and we want to raise it by 5. That's enough, 4 to 6 per day. We want to raise it to 125, so we want to raise it by 5. How much 3% saline do we need? So we use this equation, total body water is 30. 125 minus 120 is 5. We divide that by 513. Where did this 513 came? This is how much sodium we have in the 3% saline. Multiplied by 1,000, with a calculator we get the volume is 292. So approximately 300 ml. And we're not going to give that over one hour. That's, that's dangerous. We give that if the patient doesn't have that many symptoms. We can give it over 20 hours, 15 ml per hour. Or over 15 hours, we give 20 ml per hour. Usually, you don't, give, you don't need to go higher than that. If the patient is symptomatic, say you have someone um, with altered mental status, possibly someone with seizures, you can give the first 100 ml quickly, maybe over 10 minutes, and then the rest you can do it slower. Now, Another way to look at the problem is to determine the increase in serum sodium after giving one liter of a proposed solution. So we can look at it differently. Okay, I have a patient, and if I give a liter of saline or a liter of 3%, how much sodium will increase? This is a different way to look at it. And here we use the very well-known equation called the adrogi medeus equation. Dr. Adrogi and Dr. Medeus both are pioneers in the field of electrolytes and acid base with numerous, numerous publications. In my book, I quote them very frequently. So their equation says that the change in serum sodium, how much sodium will rise as a result of giving a certain solution equals, in the numerator, infusate, how much sodium in the infusate, minus current sodium, divided by total body water plus one. The one comes from the liter because we're adding one liter to total body water. So this is why we add one to the denominator. So for example, let's say that we have someone with a serum sodium of 123 and total body water is 30, like in our previous example. And uh, we want to infuse one liter of isotonic saline, 0 0.9 saline. How much sodium in that solution? We said, let's memorize 154. So sodium will rise by only one equivalent per liter. 154 minus 123 divided by 30 plus 1. 1 is the volume we're giving. So it rises by 1. So that's not very effective. So sometimes uh, you get someone with severe hyponatremia and you try saline and it doesn't work. This is why. Now, keep in mind that this is not always accurate. Uh, we did not count insensible loss of water. We did not count urine output. Sometimes you give saline and you shut off ADH and you get diuresis, water diuresis. So this is why we need to keep checking sodium every four to six hours. But in, in general, sometimes when 0.9 saline doesn't work, that's why, because it's not very effective. So again, the change in serum sodium um, uh, uh, can be calculated from that formula. Now, this formula is very important if we're giving both sodium and potassium. I just said that giving potassium is exactly like giving sodium. So what's going to happen? How do we calculate it? So here, change in serum sodium equals how much sodium in the infusate plus potassium. So we add them together minus current sodium divided by total body water plus one. So it's exactly the same equation, except we're not just factoring in sodium, we're factoring in potassium. Let's take this example. Now this patient, same patient, uh, her uh, uh, lean body weight is 60 kilograms. She has 30 liters of uh, total body water. Her serum sodium is 123, but she's very hypokalemic. Maybe she's taking a thiazide diuretic. 
So she's both hypokalemic and hyponatremic. And we decided to give 60 mL equivalent of potassium chloride added to this 0.9 normal saline. So this makes it a hypertonic solution. Now, what happens now to the sodium? Look at the equation. We add 154, this is how much sodium in the saline solution, but we add the 60 of potassium minus 123, the current sodium, divided by total body water plus one. This is the liter we're giving. And here now, serum sodium is not rising by one, it's rising by three. So if we forget to factor in potassium, we're going to overcorrect sodium because that's very significant. Two mole equivalent uh, rise in sodium is very important. Now, this is uh, a useful table. It tells us how much sodium in commonly given solutions. I ask you to memorize how much in a 3% uh, saline, and it's 513. In 0 0.9 saline, it's, it's 154. Goes without saying, in half normal saline, it's one half of 154, so it's 77 mole equivalents per liter. Lactated ringer, notice that it has 130 uh, mole equivalent of sodium per liter, so it's slightly hypotonic. So it's not the best solution for hyponatremia because you, you, uh, 0.9 saline would be better for that purpose. Uh, we have sometimes solutions that are hypotonic, like 0.2% saline in 5% dextrose. You cannot give it alone. It has to be in 5% dextrose. It has only 34 mole equivalent per liter of saline, so this is a truly hypotonic solution. And 5% dextrose obviously has zero sodium. Now, um, a quick way to determine how much 3% saline to give, I gave you the equation, is to remember that 3% saline has 513 mole equivalent of sodium per liter. But how much per ml is approximately 0.5 mole equivalent per ml. So since total body water is approximately 0.5 liter per kilogram of body weight, so if we give 1 ml of 3% saline, sodium will increase by 1. So a 60 kilogram woman would need 60 ml of 3% saline to raise sodium by 1. So if we want to raise it by 5, then only we need to multiply 5 times 60, 300. This is a good approximation because the equation got us 292. So, for example, if, uh, if uh, we, uh, we want to raise it by 4, we multiply by 4 times 60, we get 240. So this is, this is a quick way to do it. Um, you get uh, the, the lean body weight, okay? and you multiply that by how much you want to raise sodium. So someone who weighs, say, 70 kilograms, if you want to raise sodium by 4, 70 times 4 is 280. Um, if I went too fast here, pause it and, uh, and listen to it again, it, it actually does make sense. Finally today, I want to say that all of the above calculations, I want to repeat, do not do not take into account urine output, insensible water loss, or free water intake. Maybe you're giving the 3%, you're giving the 0.9 saline, and the person is drinking a lot of free water. So uh, all of these equations are not going to be accurate. This is why we check serum sodium every four to six hours, and then we regroup. We adjust the rate accordingly. And uh, I want to stop here and uh, we'll continue general principles in the management of hyponatremia in episode three. Thank you very much.